Hi, good morning and welcome to this weekend's edition of the program. The final installment for the month of June. Ah. I know, the finality of it all, huh? Where does it go? All right, uh, we are very happy to welcome back to our studios this morning, making her monthly appearance on the program to update us all on the goings-ons. The goings-ons? Hopefully Mrs. Von Villas isn't listening. Did I teach you anything when you were in my class at Middletown High School? Uh, uh, to tell you what's happening, coming up in the month of July at the uh, Edward King Senior Center is uh, their director, uh, Carmela Gear. Carm, how are you? Good morning, Art. I'm very well. And no, you? I, uh, no use kicking if you're not swimming. <laughs> That's right. And that I didn't learn from Mrs. Von Villas, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> She wouldn't want credit for that one. <laughs> I had I, I, just a sneaking suspicion. Now, listen, we, we also have another very special guest on the program uh, this time around that we'll introduce in a moment. But what I, well, what I want to do, kind of leading into her introduction, is when we have you on the program, and, and we used to have Nick on, and, and we, you know, we've done programs with the Edward King House for, for ages now, and one thing that we always point out is how important it is for seniors to remain active and why. So, without further ado, may we present Exhibit A. That's right. Florence Arshambo Our is, very own. is with us on the program. Florence, nice to see you. How are you? I'm fine, Arthur. And how are you? I'm doing just fine and dandy now that you're here. It's always lovely to see you. You never change. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... It's, it's nice that at least there's one constant thing in this world. Well, that's... Now, a lot of people have a problem with that, but uh, that we won't go there at the, uh, at, the, at the present time. But the reason I mention that is because Florence has um, been an, a, an active, active member of the Edward King Center, teaches classes, you write a column... Uh, what, that runs once a month in Newport this week, and she's like the Energizer Bunny. Just she is. She's the heart and soul, the beating heart, literally, of the the Edward King House. She's our go-to person, especially for me, where I've only been here, you know, in my position for less than a year. And I mean, it's very easy for you and I to sit here and just simply say that, but you know, when you can actually, you know, use a person like Florence as an example, you know, that that there really is a lot of truth to the. The, the active lifestyle of a senior, um, if they, if you know, obviously if they're they're blessed enough that they're you know their their health's in good enough shape and what have you. Absolutely, she lives out our mission to keep our seniors as active and independent as long as possible. Truth be told, and I know she's sitting right next to me. She exhausts me. She's more active than I am, <laughs> um, and she's usually our sounding board for any of the activities that you know. Especially if, if we have a new idea, or if it's an old idea that we may not have known about, um, Florence tends to be our sounding board for. What do you think, Florence? Is this a good idea? Is, it, is this something you would do? Yeah. Um, which tends to be a really good indicator of whether or not we should move forward with it. Because we always promote and urge area seniors to 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 get involved with. The programs, whether it's the Edward King House or the Middletown or Portsmouth or whatever right. the senior centers are, because they're, they're all in it to accomplish the same goal. Absolutely. And a lot of the seniors take advantage of uh, two or sometimes all three. But to address that as the individual that we're speaking of. Let's uh, let let's hear it from you. Well, I, I don't know if I'm the energizer bunny. Some days I don't feel like I am. <clears throat> But um, I don't know, it's sort of become my goal up there to, to get people interested. And it worries me so that more people don't avail themselves of the programs that are offered. This beautiful building, I mean, why, only in Newport would you have a senior center in a mansion. So you true. Know, and so it's true. so opulent and, and it's, it's so, just so neat. And, um, you know, and the programs are published, they're available. Everybody can find out what's going on. So I ask you, why don't they go there? The attendance should be much more than it is. And you're right. The more active you are, the better off you are when you get to 
Well, I just turned 84. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> See, it's just between us and, Absolutely. Us, <laughs> us and our, and our, as the late, great Bob Sullivan would say, our tens of listeners. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, but yeah, I think you, you really, I, and like I said, I mean, it's easy for Carm and I or whoever to sit here and just kind of, you know, throw that out there in kind of a general sense. But uh, now you've, how long have you been involved with the Edward King Center? Well, off and on over the years since it opened. Wow. I wasn't really uh, that involved in the beginning, but then um, well, I'd say actively involved probably maybe the last 10 years. And now, I mean, it's... It, I was on the board at one time. I was the treasurer, and that was maybe about 15 years ago. Now, in addition to, you know, to being a member and getting involved in some of the activities, you also, you've been teaching some classes. Tell us about those. Some of those are very interesting. Well, my favorite <coughs> is writing your family history. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> it's her favorite, and it's a house favorite as well. Uh -huh. It's my ambition in life to get everybody to write down their family stories, but I have to start somewhere, so I start at the Edward King House. Um, it's not genealogy. Genealogy is genealogy is good, but I find it very boring, and I'm in a very fortunate situation where someone in my family did the genealogy, so I don't have to do it. What we do is we write stories about... Uh, things that have happened to us, like when we were growing up, going to school, um, writing about our ancestors, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, uh, family lore, uh, just to put it down on paper because uh, it's. Uh, I'm sure some, some people, some listeners have said to themselves, I wish I asked my mother more about that or I wish I asked my grandmother more about that. And most of these people have grandchildren, great grandchildren, and and it's their, I think, their duty to put this stuff on paper for them. Wow, I think it's it's it's, it's probably there's probably more of a curiosity factor in Newport if somebody has you know a last name that coincides with you know maybe one of the founders of the mm -hmm. the, the city or a famous architect or famous for whatever reason to trace it back to say, that was my great, 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 great father, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. You're right. You can be very proud. I've been very, very fortunate that I had a cousin who did a lot of history in our family, and we discovered I have an immigrant ancestor who came to America in 1751, fought in the Revolution, which entitled me to join the DAR. Uh, I had another ancestor who was with Daniel Boone at the Salt Licks and was captured by the Indians, and that's a great story. And I'm sure other people have these stories in their family, and they're going to be lost. Yeah. And, and that's a shame. It's a real shame. And and we actually did a program on this many moons ago on this radio station with, if I'm not mistaken, just to drop his name again, Bob Sullivan on the open forum where a lot of last names actually came from occupations. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the Smiths, you know, Silversmith, Goldsmith, you know, whatever the case may be. The Bakers. Car the Bakers, sure. Carpenter, and, you know, in People with a last name like that might find that interesting, but like you said, that that can be very tedious and <laughs> kind of you know. Yeah, but the stories are wonderful, and the group is. And the, the other thing about being involved in a group that's doing this kind of thing is, we are, I have to say we're mostly the same age, maybe five years under, five years over, but pretty much the same generation. And what happens when someone reads one of their stories, immediately it triggers a memory. And you say, oh, I did that. Especially, it's amazing. No matter where we lived, we played the same games when we were kids. You know, and, and it's just amazing how much uh, recall you can get from listening to somebody else's story. Oh, sure. It really is. And now the other, you, you, now you, right now you've knocked off your classes for the... Yesterday was the last one, but we'll be meeting back in September. Okay. So July and August, you're done. And that's the uh, 
family history mm-hmm. writing. You teach that now. How often was it? Once a week? Once mm-hmm. a? It's a weekly class, mm-hmm. and all people need to do is see Carm and sign up for yeah, it. Yeah, it's on Wednesday afternoons at one p.m. How is the uh, how, how's the response to that? I imagine it's. Uh, be- well, um, well, for one thing, you don't want too large a group because everybody reads their stories. You'd be there forever if you had. Sure. That's right. So I'm I'm happy with the numbers, and I would say we probably have. 12, 14, maybe sometimes 15. Oh, nice. Uh, fortunately, they don't, we don't have perfect attendance, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, and the core, we've been doing this now, I think it's eight years. Um, we probably have about six or seven people that have been in it the whole eight years. And they're, they're very faithful. They come. They get upset if they can't come. They get upset if you cancel a class. That's right. When I uh, when I broke my wrist and I couldn't drive, and I said, "Well, we're going to cancel the class. We cancel one class, and the next week I knew I couldn't go." I said, "Oh, that's okay. We'll come to your house." And they all came over. Wow! And we still had our class. But the other thing that I've been teaching that is cooking for one, cooking from the salad bar, cooking with your leftovers, and 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 that's a fun thing. I love doing that because I used to be. Uh, Food editor for Rhode Island Senior Times until it went belly up, and 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 I love doing that column, and because I love to cook, and and it's very difficult if you live alone to to plan your menus and and get the right vitamins and the right whatever you need to keep yourself healthy, yeah. but there are loads of shortcuts. And that's you know that especially you know for seniors, the word swinging singles. Like yours, truly. <laughs> but knowing how to do that is very convenient because a lot of times, you know, you just kind of throw your your arms up in the air and go, oh, that, you know, that, it's just too much. Or, but but uh, you, there is some very handy shortcuts. Mm-hmm. And like you said, again, nutrition for seniors that are alone is very important. Which is extremely important. Very we'll, important. we'll plug your lunch program again here a little mm-hmm. later on in the program. But, yeah, that's um, – that's, uh, how did you? What inspired you to do that? What, just, the, just, that just having to do it for yourself. The, the yeah, te- well, I did several columns when I was back writing for uh, Senior Times. Okay, all and, right. Uh, and, and I just realized we had a really good response the first time. Wow! That we ran it. The second time wasn't too good, but that was okay. I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to get to run it again. Absolutely. It'll be easy because all the research and everything is already, already done. done. <laughs> Now, how did you, how did the, uh, you, you, now you do, a, a, as we alluded to earlier, you do a, once a month, there's a, a column that runs in Newport this week called Senior Savvy mm-hmm. that you author. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you decide each month what you, I remember n- not too long ago, I was reading a fascinating piece that you wrote about back in the day, you know, playing hopscotch and and that type of stuff. What, yeah, I uh, stole that from one of my columns. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. I just uh, in the beginning, I was just listing what was happening at the centers. Yep. Then I realized that that was not what I wanted to do. That anybody who belongs to a center gets a newsletter, and if they think enough about it to read it, they know what's going on. Sure. And they can mark their calendar up with whatever they want to do. So I started, so I sort of do like every other column, maybe a little something. I have one coming up um, that I'm going to do uh, about appliances, how they have changed over the year. And I did one about uh, food shopping and grocery shopping and and uh, the foods that, weren't available in because I grew up in the 30s. I'm a depression baby, and uh, we just didn't have the choices yeah. that we have now. We had like only one type of lettuce, which I never buy because I don't like it. And now you got lettuce gazoom all over the place. You know, really good stuff, and mostly because the the modes of transportation have changed so much. It's so easy to move stuff around the country, but. Uh, I don't know. I love cooking from a salad bar. You take a little of this, a little of that. You know, if you need a little bit of celery, you take a little bit of celery. Why buy a whole big thing of celery? Put it in the fridge, 
here's what you need. And then a couple weeks later, they say, oh, I better get rid of this. Yeah. Wow. So there are plenty of ingredients on the salad bar. But yeah, in another thing too that's that I, I find fascinating about being, you know, a local all my life, all 57 years, you t- two or three longer than yours truly here, but but I've having only been now, here now 47 years. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Florence, did you grow up in Newport or no. you didn't? I didn't think so. You originally I'm a Navy wife. A Navy wife. Da, da, da. Wow, okay. So you met Tom, mm-hmm. got married. He was in the Navy, what, here in Newport? No, he, uh, well, shortly after we married, he was on a ship in Newport, but he was at uh, Boston at uh, the Fargo Building. Okay. But we met at the Chelsea Naval Hospital. All right, now, and, and eventually you wound up in Newport for good, which was <laughs> how long ago? 1965. Oh, wow, okay. But, I mean, even having been around that long, it's always uh, interesting to people, f- you know, they hear your last name or they meet you for the first time and go, was your father Mario or what, were you related to Tom? I mean, just that. To, and you mentioned a, uh, you're going to do an article on appliances mm-hmm. in one of your upcoming Senior Savvy columns in Newport this week. And then it, it just it rang a bell with me. Because my father, we always talk about his liquor and delicatessen, but prior to that, he was in the appliance business. He had GMP appliance. Oh, really? I didn't know that. And you would not believe how many people over the years have told me, I bought my first television set from your father. (laughs) See how it just, you know, you mentioned appliance and how it just triggers Stories and you know yeah. little antidotes like that. Oh, your father was a great guy. Ah, he was Mario, my favorite guy in the whole planet. My father-in-law loved your father, and uh, Tom's father. Oh, okay, yeah. I have a I have a little story. Can I tell it? By all means. Well, I uh, love these. I don't I don't know where he. They used to go to Billy Goods. I don't know if if your father went to Billy Goods, but he used to see him somewhere. My father-in-law. Okay. And he had a ba- vacant lot alongside his house where he always planted a big garden. And he contracted with Mario to supply him with cherry tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my father loved cherry tomatoes. Well, this was for the deli. Yep. So what happens? My father puts his garden in, dies the 26th of June, and all these tomatoes come up. And so I called him, and I said, do you still want the tomatoes? And he said, yes, I'll take all you can give me, right? So guess who picked the tomatoes and drove them down to the, because my mother-in-law couldn't do it. Uh, And Tom was still working. And and I sold Swiss chard to Crest Farms. Yeah. Oh, my God, the reposes. Sure. Oh, we See gonna, how connected we all are? We're going to knock this off. We'll be here for hours doing this stuff. But yeah, but uh, your your husband Tom and my dad were uh, good golfing buddies too. Mm-hmm. Always tell a story. My first set of golf clubs belonged to your husband because we we're about the same height and mm-hmm. they fit both of us perfect. And it was uh, worked out good for all involved. That was a long time ago, Arthur. Oh, please. <laughs> uh, with that, while we're uh, chatting and having and very pleasantly so, I might add, if you couldn't tell, uh, with uh, Florence Archambault and. Um, also, uh, Carmela Guerra is here, the director of Newport's Edward King Senior Center, which was packed house Wednesday night for the council meeting or what? Packed house Wednesday night for the council meeting. We were so proud to have the Newport City Council utilizing our ballroom as their alternate location for the, uh, the city council on, on Wednesday night. I was a bit of a wreck, but all worked out very well in the end. We mimicked City Hall as much as we could. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think everyone, even with the humidity from yesterday, because of course Mother Nature wasn't kind enough to comply with giving us the same weather on Wednesday as we had on Monday. Yeah. Um, but even with the humidity level being up there, I think all were very comfortable and, and business went on um, as needed for the city. And just made us very proud to I think I think I wish more people would would uh, utilize the building there's there's so many possibilities there and I think sometimes people don't even think about it 
Yeah. And that's what often happens as folks walk into the building. And, and I heard it again Wednesday night as folks were coming in for the city council meeting. I haven't been in this building since I was a little kid, and it was a library. library. Um, and, yep. and if I may, Art, for a moment, I'd like to put a little plug in that um, on my behalf and Florence's as well. Florence is our house historian. Um, so she, having been with the program just about since the very beginning, she really is our go-to regarding information. But we have been looking for photographs of the building, not from the outside, but from the inside of when the building was a library and when it was first, um, when it transitioned to becoming a uh, senior center in the uh, late 1960s. And we can't seem to find any anywhere. So if your listeners would be so kind, if you have photographs to share, I don't need to keep the photograph. We're happy to scan them, and we're also happy to give credit to whomever owns them. But we'd really like to be able to incorporate some of these wonderful photographs from the time that the, the building has been in public use since the Leroy King family has donated it um, to the city of Newport to incorporate it um, as part of the house tours, which will be starting in the month of July, um, written by our very own Florence Archambault. Um, and, and so we'd like to be able to have some of those pictures to give folks uh, an idea of what the house looked like back in the day when it had a use other than the senior center and what it looked like as a senior center, but early on in its development. So if anyone has anything out there to share, please email us at info at edwardkinghouse.org or give us a call at 846-7426. I'd be happy to come meet you or figure out a way of being able to scan those photographs, but we're on the lookout for them. Now, I happen to remember and did spend some time in that building when it was the Newport Public Library. Because I used to, back in the day, spend a lot of time at 331 Spring Street at the corner of Spring and Young, which was a three-story apartment building owned by Grandma and Grandpa Berluti. Uh, however, uh, the, it was before I knew what a camera was. So <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't take any pictures back then uh, as a wee young lad, but... Uh, if, again, if anybody out there has any pictures from back in the day when it was the library, get a hold of Carmen and let Please her know. Do. Thank you. No, that would be great. It's just, a, it, I mean, it's just, it's just a fabulous uh, venue. It really is. I mean, a lot of senior centers aren't that fortunate to have no, a building like that. Very, to very out. lucky, and it, it's so interesting to, especially this time of year where people just come to visit for the sake of coming to visit. Even Wednesday night, we had a gentleman walk in the door that said he remembered it when it was a, uh, uh, a library. And I asked him, as I've been asking a lot of people walking in, okay, what kind of a kid were you? <laughs> were you the child that hid in the stacks and then slid down the banister? Or were you the good child that sat right in front of the uh, checkout counter and read your book quietly until your parents were ready for you to go home? That was me. That, which I one? Sure <laughs> Somehow I think you were the banister sliding kid. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, we have to take a time out here. We don't want that story to linger on, trust me. Uh, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Uh, again, we're chatting with uh, Carmela Gear, who's the um, director of the uh, Edward King House Senior Center in Newport, and our good friend Florence Archambault. Back with more in just a moment. Sit tight. All right, welcome back to the program, and uh, once again this weekend we're joined by Carmela Gear, who is the director of Newport's Edward King House Senior Center and uh, one of the very active members, instructors. She slices, she dices, she does it all. Florence Orishambeau. <laughs> we're going to shift shift gears here in the second portion of the program to uh, do what we do every month, once a month, on a regular basis, and that's to let you know what's uh, What's coming up is the, the month's change here. So uh, without further ado, Carm, what's up for the month of July? Oh, dun, dun, dun. Da, 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 da. So one of the things that Florence was um, instrumental in, uh, as I'm coming now into the last quarter of my first year with the Edward King House, she had suggested that I pour through the scrapbooks that are connected to the house. And so we have been doing that for the past mm, three or four months now. Um, pouring through the old scrapbooks, and I also ordered new scrapbooks and started a new one for this year so that we continue the tradition of having um, 
scrapbooks with, a, you know, news clippings and photos of, of events that occur with the center. How cool. Something to keep that history going. She's really been the, the cornerstone of and the energy behind our doing that. It's certainly well worth doing all of that. The so, historian that absolutely. she is. Absolutely. Right. So in looking through some of those old scrapbooks, the um, Edward Kinghouse Senior Center under the um, auspices of Helen McLeish used to have what was called the Newport Holiday for Seniors. It was a week-long series of events yeah. that were all things. Actually, though, that was a separate corporation. It wasn't. It wasn't a part of the King House. Oh, there you go. So I've learned something new. So it had its own. It was its own driving force. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it was such a great idea because it was such a wonderful advocacy piece at the time mm -hmm. um, to to bring about senior issues and to put senior issues, you know, in the forefront and under a spotlight that. When it went away, I've discovered now in the year 2014 that those senior issues are kind of put back in the, the, the darkness and back in the closet again. Um, so we wanted to kind of take that idea of the Newport um, Holiday for Seniors and kind of bring it back to life again. So in July, the King House will be sponsoring um, the Newport Senior Week from July 14th to July 20th. And every day for that week, from Monday through Sunday, there are specific activities that are open not only to our members, but also to the public to, again, put seniors back in that spotlight again, um, to begin that conversation of advocacy for seniors. And they're all, you know, fun, active, independent events, you know, for, for folks to, to come and take a look at the King House and know that it is there and know what it is that it does, but also to uh, have an opportunity for seniors to network with one another, um, to have a chance to talk about the, the good, the bad, and the ugly of being a senior citizen in, in 2014, 2015, um, but also to be able to incorporate their families as well to see, you know, for those members of the King House, bring your families along so they can see where you hang out when you come to play pool or when you go to Florence's family history class. And for those who haven't had a chance to sign up as of yet and feel that they are, quote, unquote, too old for a senior center or not ready for a senior center, I often wonder what that really means, um, to, to really see it for yourself so that you have this true understanding of what it is that we're all about. There is no one sitting around in a rocking chair watching the world go by. We don't have rocking chairs to begin with. The world does not go by. It happens there at the King House. So we start on Monday with our very own Miss Florence, um, who will be offering a daytime and an evening session on the history of the Edward King House, which is free and open to the public. Oh, it's more the family. And the family, right, that w was connected to the King House, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to have some of these photos of what happened after the, uh, mm -hmm. the donation of the house. Now, to now when is, Florence, when's your, when's your presentation again on the history? Monday the 14th of July. Monday the 14th? 10 o'clock and 6 p.m. And 6 p.m. Wow. Ooh, you're going to play a double and header. Double header. All after. right. And, and it start, the story starts all the way back right after the Revolutionary War when Dr. David King came to Newport and established the King family. Now, the, now the building as it is there today goes back to when? The, re the reason I ask that, go ahead. The reason I brought this, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> oh, right, she was ready. What do we got? Okay, Edward King built the house in 1845. Okay. And he lived there until he died in 1875, and then his mother, his, I mean his wife, lived there for a while. And then um, at that time it was left to his son, George Gordon King, who whose wife didn't want to live there. So they built a new house, and uh, that's in 1912 when he gave the building to the city for use as a library. The reason I mention that is because just down the road, a spell is a very similar building, which is now the home of the Newport Lodge of Elks. And there is a sign on the front lawn that says the former, now here's the key word, the former site of the U.S. Naval Academy, I yes. believe it was. That's right. And a lot of people will see the sign, walk in the building, and go, this was a naval academy? No, well, actually, it, was it wasn't. The, I'm sorry? That building wasn't there then. It was another building called the Atlantic House. Okay. Which is where it was a uh, temporary quarters for the Naval Academy during the Revolutionary War. Then that building was raised, and another gentleman built 
the building that is there currently. Yeah. So it, that's why it says the site. Exactly. But it, it fakes See a lot. What of, I mean, I. It fakes <laughs> a lot of it fakes a lot of people out because it we does. go, no, 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 not this building. This was the site of that building was on this that's property, right. but it was a totally different building. So. Right. Anyway. And Florence is the one to ask. So That's she right. has those details that and so there'll be more of those details regarding the King family for that particular event on Monday the fourteenth. Yeah. And then the following day on the fifteenth, the house will be closed as a senior center, but will be open all day from nine to four nine AM to four PM um, with the uh, newly indoctrinated uh, house tours. Uh, that will run every 30 minutes beginning at 9 a.m. And we have volunteers who are at the ready, uh, ready to receive Florence's uh, tour to uh, memorize it and practice it. Uh, and it's free and open to the public that entire day. Um, and that'll be the... F- the 15th, 15th, Tuesday the 15th. Yep, okay. it'll run from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, in our last segment, we mentioned that uh, Florence, your, your classes are knocking off for the months of July and August. That's right. Is that the case with all the classes? Not all of Well, no. We do okay. have summer classes that will be running for uh, five to seven weeks in July. All right. The folks who take their yoga classes and Tai Chi classes, um, they are our staple classes, and, and they depend on them happening throughout the year. They didn't want to take the whole summer off. So we'll be keeping those classes running um, throughout the summer, and then we'll take a break again uh, and open up again uh, for classes come the fall in September. Mm -hmm. The clubs, the knitting club, for instance, has taken the summer off. Family history has taken the summer off. Um, But cribbage is still playing. Bridge is still playing. Those groups are still the, the billiard room is still open. All of those things are still happening. You better not shut that billiard room. No, oh. no, 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 no. I know better than to do something like that. Yikes. Um, so, indeed, there's, there's still a great deal of activity throughout the summer. When I first came on board, I was told that the summer tends to be very quiet. And I said, well, it used to be very quiet because that's going to change. Yeah. Um, so it's incredibly busy now. So there's a whole slew of activities. And, again, you can go to our website. If you're a member, you've, you've already gotten all the information in the mail. Um, for information on all the other activities. We're uh, bringing back the Senior Ball um, on Saturday the 19th, and we're not hosting that at the King House. We're hosting that at the uh, Best Western Mainstay, Um, and we have a DJ for that event, so we're very excited about that. And uh, we've uh, put together a memorial tea for Sunday the 20th to honor um, the volunteers and the folks of the King House Um, that have passed and to also honor our current volunteers Mm. and that's uh, Sunday the 20th at one o'clock couldn't do Um, it without them no absolutely couldn't do anything without them when they they really are you know and Florence is a prime example of that they are the team that that makes the place tick all I do is well for the most part follow them but guide them sometimes Um, but generally speaking I'm I'm the facilitator but it, it is what it what they are looking for their center to be and they continually tell me we want to travel and we want to do more and we want to be active. And that's a big part of our mission. And so that's what I do. And earlier in the program, you know, we were talking to, to Florence about, you know, how important it is for seniors to remain active. And, and another thing that we, we touched on, and again, it was kind of in connection with the class she teaches, you know, the cooking for one class. Mm-hmm. And the nutrition aspect, of course, is, is very, very important um, and I alluded to your lunch program. I think at one time the lunches may not have been served during the summer, but you're continuing oh, with the lunch sure program, are. right? Yep. yep, we're continuing. That's a year-round program. It does um, move forward in July and August with just the same great menus that um, we have had in the past. Um, there are a, I, I do need to kind of add a little um, addition to that and the there are a couple of days uh, a few days actually when we will not be serving lunch because the center itself will be closed so on the 4th of july yep. the center is closed what we, come on I'm you s- slackers i know <laughs> it's my birthday on july 3rd so we're all celebrating it on the 4th oh, cool. by taking the day off um, and i actually become a senior on that day i turned 50 on july 3rd and i'll be uh, filling out my own membership papers like did you hear that Floyd? she's a kid uh, I, I she's know. a kid <laughs> yep I may be the baby in the house, but I'm very proud to say that I will become a member this year. In fact, now is a really good time for me to also plug that we're in our renewal for membership as we speak. Mm -hmm. Um, The uh, membership runs for the house from July 1 to June 30, so the old year is ending in just a few days, but we'll be beginning again on July 1. 
Um, and if you haven't renewed as of yet, please do so by July 30th. It stays at $25 until the end of July, but come the 1st of August, it will the membership fee will go up to $30. Oh, by the way, one thing we should mention about the lunch program, um, if you uh, and I highly recommend you take advantage of it because it's just a fabulous meal every day at high noon at the Edward King House. But if you're going to do that any time in the near future, start saving up now because the price for that is an outrageous three dollars if you're 60 and older it's suggested donation no less that's yeah, exactly it's, it's, and it's actually yeah it's it's suggested donation mm -hmm. and uh, for the rest of us it's five but i mean it's just you can for oh my it's just I, and I, it literally is soup to nuts it is yeah it is and, and they are they're incredible meals i don't know why more people don't take advantage of them but you also need to make a reservation yes that's right 24 day hours before. in advance mm-hmm because the meals come down from Providence. Cranston. Cranston. That's right. And they need to know how many to bring down. Sure. But, uh, you know, you get soup or salad. You get an entree. You, you get bread. You get milk. You get tea. You get wonderful lemonade um, and dessert for $3. I mean, come on. I know. Not too long ago, I had butterscotch pudding for dessert up there with a meal at the King House. I don't remember the last time yeah, I had. Yeah, that made you grin from ear to ear, absolutely. Oh, boy, it's great. Well, the so, stuffed peppers yesterday were good. They were. Mm. We were all kind of wondering what the, the stuffed peppers were going to look like and what they were going to taste like. Well, it got very quiet, as it usually does during lunch, because we were all busy eating yeah. Yeah, when yeah. all was said and done. They were very, very good. Yeah. I couldn't have done better myself. Oh, there boy. you go. Well, that's high praises. <laughs> Everything is fabulous. Um, and you know, this time of the year, the weather gets warmer and more humid. And a lot, a lot of times it might take, you know, you might go, oh, geez, I don't know if I want to bake this big hot meal. But you offer an alternate. You can get a sandwich in, mm -hmm. instead. Right. It's a hot meal or a cold meal. And if you don't want to cook at home because it is hot, yep. let us do the cooking for you. The Absolute. hot meal will be waiting for you. Absolutely. Um, so, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And the other uh, big news is that we will be closing the center down the week of August 25th for the entire week to do a top-to-bottom cleanup of the house. We'll be stripping the floors and re-waxing and, um, you know, cleaning in those corners that we can't get to during the year, washing the windows, you know, that, that kind of thing. So we will be closed during that week. There will be no lunch served uh, that week. And then we'll be up and running the the day after Labor Day and ready to get moving into our fall semester. Now, give me give me that week again, August twenty fifth. Okay. To the thirtieth, the 29th? ninth. Well, whatever that might be. The 29th, August twenty fifth to the 29th. Okay, but of course we'll have another reminder on your next program Absolutely. as we talk about what's going on and yep. in, in that particular instance, mm -hmm. what's not going on. At the, uh... It might be easier to ask that question <laughs> at the rate things are going at the house, absolutely. How about trips? you have any trips coming up? <gasps> we do. We do still have room on the New York City trip, which is uh, leaving on the 29th of August and coming back for September 1. Um, I'm going on that trip. Florence is going on that trip. We're very excited um, to, uh, to go and see all the sites in New York City. Uh, we just came back from a Gansett cruise tour of the... The, uh, the harbor, the bay, and uh, we have uh, another one coming up in August with Save the Bay, the Save the Bay Lighthouse Tour. Oh, nice. It's coming up in August. We're going to the Newport Playhouse uh, in August. Um, you know, our new uh, afternoon program manager, Kathleen, has been instrumental in, in putting together some really great um, packages for for the house, and, and we're very grateful to her for that. We're going to Marchetti's Restaurant in July, on July 12th, um, to have a... Uh, an authentic Italian meal off the island this time around. Now, where is this? Uh, Marchetti's in Cranston. Oh, okay. So we're going to stuff ourselves silly uh, at that one. That's Saturday, July 12th. And then, of course, we have Senior Week and a trip to Foxwoods. Now, I know that this is a surprise to the rest of the world, I'm sure. I have never been to Foxwoods. So my tour guide of all things Florence is going to be my tour guide for Foxwoods on Friday, uh, July 25th. We'll be leaving the center at 8 a.m. and returning by 5 p.m. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that because in that case, I'm not really the chaperone. I'm the newbie. Mm -hmm. um, and these guys are, have been so kind to uh, want to give me a tour of all that, that Foxwoods That has to be and, one of the biggest deals around. Yeah, absolutely. You get a bus ride, a free buffet, free play for, what, $25? $25. $25. And, no. You know, it, it, 
you know, I'm going to get into the gambling thing. But a lot of people take that trip that don't gamble. I was just going to say, I, I didn't just want... Just to get off the island. And I'll tell you, it's the most fabulous place in the world for people watching. Oh, yeah. my God. I know people that, have, that go to Foxwoods on a regular basis. They live in Narragansett. They don't gamble at all. They're not into... That's why they go. To people watch and to take advantage of some of the other great stuff there. It isn't... I mean, it's you know, it's by then it's primarily known as a place to you know play the slots or the mm -hmm. whatever you know. Right. But it, but I mean, you can go there and then not feel oh, like they have all kinds of shows and there's nothing and else to do. Shopping and all kinds oh, yeah. of right. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. And and people have raved about the buffet. Absolutely. Oh, the buffet is incredible. Yeah. Especially so. when you when you get it for free. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, yeah. even if you have to pay for it, it's good. I go once in a while overnight with my daughter, and we end up, we still do the buffet. Yep. Even though we have to pay for it. Yeah. So, All right. we're looking forward to that. We also have a new program um, coming in July. Um, it's a, a Reiki and hand, hand massage program that's being offered by uh, Carmen Smith. And um, it's an opportunity to relax and de-stress with a, either a 30-minute hand massage or a 30-minute Reiki session. She is certified in both. Um, and it's by appointment only, but she'll be available Mondays um, for half-hour sessions between 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. beginning on July 7th. It's $20 for a half-hour session, and if you really need to de-stress and you need both, the uh, hand massage and a Reiki session for one hour, it's $35 for the combined session. Um, and we've had a number of our uh, members that have asked for uh, that particular service, so we are, are thrilled to state that we will be providing it ourselves under our roof. Um, and Carmen is also a member at the Edward King House, so we're thrilled to have her on board as one of our uh, service providers. And I, I must say, uh, throughout the course of the year, um, you offer many programs, whether you bring in a guest speaker that mm -hmm. has to do with of a financial topic, or I know you work very closely with the visiting nurses of, of Newport and Bristol County that offer uh, many areas of expertise along those lines. But uh, I, I urge people to keep an eye out for what's what's uh, what's coming down the road as far as those are concerned, because they're just very informative and and and. And even like from time to time, you'll bring in somebody, for example, from the attorney general's office. That's right. And I got an e email from you earlier today about a, a, a new scam. That's right. I came into the office today to have, and I know we're bopping a little bit from one subject to another, um, to have four messages on my voicemail uh, warning me about phone calls that our local residents have been getting from an organization claiming to represent the Newport Police and the D.A.R.E. program looking for money. So we contacted the Newport Police immediately, and they did some investigating for us, and indeed there is no such program happening. So we posted it to, uh, it'll be on our website a little later today, um, but we posted it to our, our email listserv uh, to let everyone know, and on our Facebook page. Well, that's pretty brazen, huh? Yeah. Saying you represent the local police department? Right. Hello. Well, and evidently, after talking with Newport Police, the national grid scam is still going on as yep. well. So if you're getting a phone call from people who claim to be from National Grid, saying that they're going to cut off your lights within 24 hours if you don't pay for um, your bill. Even if you owe money on your bill, National Grid does not make those phone calls. Hang up yep. um, and don't talk to them anymore. If you want to make yourself feel better, call National Grid after the fact or call the Newport Police um, or whoever your local police uh, station happens to be to, to get more information. But please do not give no. away your information unless you've initiated the call. Exactly. So. Okay. So um, uh, just a, a, a few other things that I uh, wanted to talk about and, and to add in, and I know I'm going back and forth. I apologize for that. Back to Senior Week for a moment. We would like to thank our uh, premier sponsor, Sardellas of Newport. Um, the Sardellas Trust is sponsoring a number of our events for Senior Week. Um, including our free concert and our, uh, our senior ball. Um, in addition to that, we're thrilled to announce that one of our other premier sponsors is the Newport Preservation Society. Um, I'm so excited about this, I can't. I may stammer as I say it, um, but for the week of Senior Week, Monday through Friday of Senior Week, again, July 14th uh, to the 18th, any 
uh, current member of the Edward King House can get into any of the preservation sites for free when they show their new card for this year during that week. It includes everything but the servants tour, the Elm wow. servants tour. That's excluded from the package. But we are so grateful and so delighted to have the uh, Newport Preservation Society as a major sponsor as well in uh, providing that service to our Edward King House mm -hmm. members. Um, so that, I, I just I can't go without thanking them um, for being a part of uh, honoring our seniors in the city of Newport. Again, Thank you will need your card uh, okay. at the door in order to receive free entry. Thank you, Trudy Cox. That's right. Thank you, Trudy. And company. Yep, and your and entire you, you, team. Yeah, and you can't get a card unless you join. That's right, it's exactly and, right. And also, the benefits of being a member is that you'll always know what's going on because you get a newsletter. And if you read your newsletter and post it where you can see it and remember to look at it, That's right. you're going to know what's going on, and you can plan ahead. And well, important for our members to know, too, if... This next newsletter that's going out for July and August will be your last one if you haven't renewed. So it's important that you renew your membership. Outstanding. Well, like that credit card company says on TV all the time, membership has its privileges. It does. And uh, that's pretty much it. And with that, uh, unless there's anything else you need to squeeze in real quick, nope. Carm, that's we, it. Are, we are uh, out of time. But uh, this has been a blast, and I uh, appreciate all the information. We'll do it again at the end of July, and uh, let folks know what's coming up in August, including the week you're going to be closed. Absolutely. So we, we want to remind everybody of that, of course, uh, one more time before it actually happens. Florence, anything you'd like to add? It's been great to have you on the program. Thank you for doing it. Well, it's been a while since I've been on a program with you, Arthur. It has been, yeah. But I thank, and I thank you, and I thank WADK for this opportunity to get the word out and and even if you don't live in Newport, if you live in Middletown, Portsmouth, they have senior centers, too. That's yep, right. Yep. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the program, a lot of folks do take advantage of programs at all three. So mm -hmm. um, it's all... Uh, we all have something special to offer. So, uh, indeed. Exactly right. Walk on out the door, pick yep. up the phone, whatever you need to do, but become a part of the programs we have to offer. Yep. They uh, they all coexist, coexist very nicely. And... Um, and uh, that, I, I don't know what a lot of folks in the, throughout the Newport County and Aquidneck Island and beyond in some instances would do without you. So keep up the good work. Thank you. And thanks for being on the program. Thank you, Thank Art. Thank you. See you around the campus. <laughs>